One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Welcome to this Royston Shutdown Showcase Special, where this time we have a chat to the man who made the live showcases happen. As the Royston Folk Club found its feet, there was one consistent person offering songs and supporting the club. As club founder Mike Farrow announced his move to Wales and asked me to keep the club going, it was to this person I turned. I don't know how the club could have continued without Mark Gammon. Mark going to join us on Zoom and we're going to have a chat about all things folk and lockdown. So we've got Zoom switched on. Hi Mark. First I guess we should address the elephant in the room. How's lockdown been for you? Well, when it started it was all going to be brilliant for me because I was going to study all of Juan Martin's guide to flamenco guitar and become this brilliant flamenco guitarist. In practice it turned out completely different to that. It's because my work could transfer online. I'm not saying it's going to, con going to continue, but certainly through this summer, I haven't had time to think about music. But the actual it's lockdown but, has actually increased the amount of work that you've had to yeah. play Yeah, I've been busier this year than any point previously. I realised that most of my relationship music with music was to use the music. Um, and I don't actually listen to music very much just for the sake of listening to it. Um, and when I realized that I was in lockdown and I couldn't turn it into an event or play it with somebody else, or I, I lost all motivation. How's it been your relationship with music? I found myself sitting around just thinking about it a lot. Yeah. And out of that, I managed to write two lockdown songs. But apart from that, I've not been quite so motivated to write because I'm waiting to see how this is panning out. So, Mark, what were your first thoughts back when we first considered taking over from Mike Farrow and committing to running the club? I thought it was brilliant because it meant I could, it gave me an excuse to go out to clubs every night of the week. In practice, it didn't work out like that. But certainly... For the initial weeks, I was off to Cambridge and CB2 and Berries and Edmonds, The Milkmaid and all those clubs, keeping a weather eye out in case somebody was impressive. In practice, what, what happened later was that they started bombarding us with requ requests to play. So you ended up audi auditioning them from video clips and, and recordings. Uh, did you find it easier using video clips or going out and meeting people in person? It's horses for courses, isn't it? It's, it's a matter of taste. Sometimes you can judge people really easily from video clips and recordings that they send you. Um, it's great to meet somebody in a club. And in a, in a couple of ca cases, I knew what we were talking about before we got started. The classic example is Mr. Ben Smith, um, who I'd known for several years and I knew how brilliant he was and I'd worked, worked it with him in a day job. So that was a no brainer. Uh, we've got a clip of uh, Ben Smith. Uh, should we have a little look at that? Oh, I think we should. I really do think we should. I'm going where the glamour suits my clothes. I'm going where the glamour suits my clothes. I'm going where the glamour suits my clothes. Oh, never been treated this way. Tastes 
like wine I'm going where the water tastes like wine So fine I've never been treated this way that we've had that have come to the club are there any that particularly stand out and 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 make the night memorable um, there's a constant run of performers that, that stand out and make the night memorable memorable in the early days i mean there was ben um uh the, every time i saw hannah sanders she cro kept cropping up and she she made my jaw jaw hit the floor um the classic one was Chris Fox, who I met, I met when he was very young at CB2, and he, he was just getting interested in folk singing. And um, I, I was really impressed, and I went up to him after the gig and, and said, you've really got to become a folk singer, and he's been blaming me for that ever since, because I don't think, it, I don't think it's making him enough money. But he's gone from strength to strength, he really has. Mm. We, should, we should hear some Chris Fox, yeah? Let's listen to Chris. <laughs> My story starts out way back when I had dreams That I couldn't give in so I hitched a ride Into Tinseltown The beaches were long, the ladies were lovely Everything was made up, nothing was ugly I didn't know much about Tinseltown Now I'm running from the law I'm running like I've never run before Well, I flipped some burgers, I cleaned some floors Handed out leaflets, knocked on all the doors With a million dreamers Just like me but Things got tired and the money ran dry The birds were circling in my sky So I fell in with the wrong crowd Now I'm running From the law I'm running like I've never run before This crowd paid me a couple of grand To bury a body in the sand Out of town and close to the border the coyote howled and the owl did screech I'm a million miles from that goddamn beach Where nothing was ever ugly And those lovely ladies Now I'm running from the law I'm running like I've never run before I dug his grave, I dug it deep Two foot wide, the sides were steep But by the time I got topside I heard sirens wailing Well, that crowd had fit the crime on me They told the cops I would be with a shovel in my hands And blood on my sleeves Now I'm running From the law I'm running I've never run before oh, 
30 pieces all melted down By my way into Tinseltown I'm going nowhere And I'm getting dead fast This place has left me High and dry In that prison The day I die my dreams Roll in the past Now I'm a running From the law I'm running like I've never run before Yes, I'm running Lord, I'm running from the law I'm running like I never run before. Um, so you were saying, Mark, that, that most nights have something that really lights the night up and makes it special. What what kind of things? <laughs> I'll go wider than that. The thing that makes it great at Royston is the people. We have a wonderful crowd of regulars who come just to listen to the music. They're not all performers listening to each other. They are Royston people and they see it as part of life in Royston now. And their taste drives what we put on. We're not, no longer a traditional folk club in the traditional sense of the word. Almost anything goes at Royston. We have, we have a bit of trouble with drum kits because they're noisy and big. But um, <laughs> having said that, I do like the traditional folk club rules, the ones that say you shouldn't chatter when someone's performing. And if you, if you go to the loo it, 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 between, between numbers, wait at the back of the room before you retake your seat because that's disruptive. That's right. And people respect that and it, it makes it feel good. Yeah. And... and it, it all helps with the atmosphere of the club. Yeah. I want to know a little bit more about you, Mark, because we've not normally had an awful lot of time while we're at the club to talk about your own background. So this is this is quite personal and uh, uh, it'll be new for me to ask these questions. So uh, if I could ask, first of all, what's the sort of timeline of your involvement in music? It says on my website that I've had a guitar in my hand since I was 12 years old. And that is absolutely true. And that is now a very long time. And it kind of came to in a, a head in the 90s when I was playing regularly with my friend David Hardy. God bless him. He's gone now. Um, and we, you, well, that got, got us into record, recording because we blagged some studio time. And I, that I've re realised that's the thing I like doing more than anything else in the world is is get, getting a studio t tan and making recordings. Um, so we got an album out of that. I did my own first one a few years later, probably 10 years later. Um, and I've just carried on doing it. And now I, I, I've, I've actually got a record label and I've got a catalog, catalog of 21 albums in it. The latest of which is Daniel Nesselrode's latest album, which is highly recommended by the way. It's called Windrush and it can be ordered from worldwidewebclunkandrattle.com. <laughs> well plugged. <laughs> you're you're you write and so many people like your songs and identify, you know, with your songs. They know your songs and sing along with them. Uh, Thompson the Mariner being one that jumps into my mind straight away. What inspires yeah. you to write? Um, anything. Just lately, it's been lockdown, but um, it, it's more about how you write. Um, I try to paint pictures with words. That's the way, that's the way, of, way I've had it best described. And that's what all the great songwriters do. Um, you know, Guy Clark or, or Lucinda Williams or Joni Mitchell, they, they all have, have that ability to let you see what they're writing about. You think of um, Waterloo Sunset. Terry meets Julie, Waterloo Station every Friday night. It's, it's not just narrative, it paints a picture. Yeah. You can see that in your mind's eye. And that, that's what great writers do. And we've had a few of them at the club. We really have had a few of them at the club. My, my, my personal favourite of all time is Emma Scar, who really should be a national treasure by now. I think we've got a clip of Dame. <laughs> Dame Emma Dame. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll look that out now. 
The 80s Blues by Black Scar. into a song's paints picture. Now, um, so you, there's not just your solo work that you played, you play now in not just one, but a couple of bands. Were there bands in the background? What's your band history? Well, a long time ago in the early seventies, I was in a prog rock band that was un unbelievably terrible. And I do have recordings to prove how bad it was. Um, but now there's two bands. There's, there's Sky West, which is an ongoing thing with my mates, and we're working at the moment, recording in a barn, it, because that's the only thing we can do just now, um, which is entertaining for me. I don't know about the rest of the band. Um, and then there's Thursday's band, which has been a blessing to me over the past five years, I think we, we've been going now. That's wonderful, because it m means that I can work with... A, the, the fantastic string section, Lucinda Fudge and Matt Kelly. I've been working with Nick Blishen, who's also a very old friend. Actually, I was in a band with Nick Blishen in the 80s, now I come to think of it. We were called the Dewhursts, so oh, named yeah, because we'd, <laughs> we would butcher any song we came across. Um, Thirsty's band, we've just done our best work. We've done two albums so far and, and a little EP to get us started. 
Um, the most recent album is Chittagong Tattoo, which has got really, it, it came out just before lockdown started, got some really good reviews. Um, we even went and made a 12 inch vinyl version of it, which was completely radi radical for a folk musician these days. And we're really proud of it. It's, it's really our best work. Um, but of course it happened all just before lockdown. So everything's kind of got put on ice. And what we're hoping is to relaunch it again in the spring. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to say, uh, I think we ought to hear just a little bit of that. And now, oh, okay. Yes. And now I've got that snippet. I can decide whether to do that later with you. <laughs> <laughs> Shah Alam fell a hundred feet today We found him lying face up on the keel Azrael came and bore his soul away And left his body broken by the steel These are ocean-going ships we break Not built to come apart with ease Three hundred taka is our pay And a dream of greater wealth beyond the seas So I may, I may edit that out or not, but we can get okay. yeah, a little bit of Chittagong tattoo. Uh, Mark, you're so generous with the support of other musicians. And frankly, some musicians, they come to the club like pandas from the zoo, uh, you know, and I mean, they eat shoots and leaves, you know, so they're, they're up there on the stage and then they're off. Um, but you've always been there whenever you've come to the club in the early days. And you've always given all that back to the musicians as they're, as they're performing. Um, and it gets me that quite often we get something really special going on in the club. I look over at you and I can see you enjoying it. And if you catch my eye, your mouth to me, give them a concert. <laughs> <laughs> so how important is this aspect of running the club for you? Uh, and how does it fit around other musical commitments? Um, it's not really a commitment running the club, is it? It's, it, it's been a joy for five or six years. Uh, I, I can think of very few occasions when I was dis disappointed by it. Even on the quietest nights, you always find something. And I love those moments when you look up and I look up and somebody's just done th some, something extraordinary that we weren't expecting. Um, the one that really sticks in mind is K Katie Sp Spencer when she came along to um a, compete in our young artists competition and she sat down and played blues run the game as as well as i've ever heard it played and she has the, has this insanely beautiful voice insane skills on the guitar i mean i'm immensely envious of her that was one of the highlights of, of the whole folk club experience i think we should find uh, uh, a clip and get that on this show Boat to England, darling, maybe to Spain. Wherever I have gone, ever I've been
floats police I'll breathe in down the necks of those who are creeping and I'm driving away from Saturday night and I'm going past the top of your street again tonight Street lights they flicker on and on, on and on, on and on. It's the Shenandoah silent disco. You're not here anymore You're not here anymore And all the apples on the tree In the garden that was yours Are all falling to the floor Cause you're not here anymore You're not here They still flicker on and on, on and on, on and on. It's the Shenandoah silent disco. Someone's burning his old wardrobe on the green And all the kids are laughing barefoot dead on the grass And the cold is coming in It's September again Street lights, they still flicker on and on, on and on, on and on. Yeah, Katie was one of our contestants in our Young Musician of the Year contest. How easy was it to find young people and get them to come along uh, to enter the contest? Kudos to my Becky for coming up with the idea because it was a brilliant idea. And I, funnily enough, I was a bit nervous of it at first because I, I think a lot of people don't see folk music as young person's music. Um, and I, we weren't sure we were going to get enough. And they, they did tend to dri dribble in the application at first. But by the end of the year, we had filled every date with young people and i'm talk, talking very young people in some cases yeah. all of whom were amazing um and becky was spot on and many of those performers have come along and been spellbinding okay yeah. the one that springs to mind next is 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 lizzie hardingham who's got a voice to die for yeah and it's always a pleasure i consider her a friend now let's find a lizzie hardingham clip and play that
with Lizzie Harden and um, I just love the fact that we're part of Katie Spencer and Lizzie's uh, hit musical history and, and they will survive and they will be able to come back. But I'm very concerned for uh, the bands. We were so proud of our winners in 2017, the Trials of Cato, who played for us at the club, played for us at the bungalow, and then went on to win Best Album at the BBC Two um, Radio Two Folk Awards in 2019. Let's just see a clip of Trials of Cato to see what we're talking about. <laughs> So there we go, we've got three guys there who had given up their full-time jobs uh, and, and had reached the point where they'd got a diary full of bookings, uh, they'd plumbed money into websites and recording costs. Where do you see uh, the future? It may be a long time before we get back to performing as we know it. I'd, and I really feel for a band like Charles of Cato because, as, as we know, they, they went prof professional relative, a relatively short time before lockdown happened. I don't know how that's left them financially. I hope they keep plugging away. I suspect they'll have to get, go back and get temporary day jobs like everybody else, like people who are working in the theatre. My daughter, for instance, got, is in a similar situation people who are working anywhere in the performing arts. It, I'm, uh, and it's our heritage and we have to protect it if we possibly can. We may all get vaccinated, Chris. That's, what, that's the one I'm hoping for in the back of my mind all the time. Who knows if that's going to happen or not. Me too. Or we may learn to manage the risk in a way that allows us to st start performing for each other again. Um, there's a band I'm thinking of that uh, we can't get enough of. And I think we should finish this special with that band. Thursday's band, they're a good band. Let's play some more of them. I do, I do miss performing with them sometime soon. I hope. Thank you so much for this special, Mark. Have you enjoyed oh, it? Thank you. Yeah, I've enjoyed it. We're getting well relaxed towards the end.
I have seen some broken men I have seen some damage there I have seen the long walk out of harm I wasn't born a fighting man But it made me what I am If you hear me dream Close for fear that you slip away. Counting the beat of the clock in the dark. Cuddling and crying deep in the night. Colliding like magnets collide. Not even history could tear us apart. Beautiful. 
Well, thank you very much. Have a great time. <laughs>